So plasticity is really the key to survival the fittest at its finest because cellular plasticity means that a cell can respond in a different way to the same uh, challenge depending on the point in time. So really, um, if you um, take a biopsy of a tumor and you get a molecular signature, a phenotype, a genotype, that phenotype and genotype is really just a snapshot in time. Yes. And there's no guarantee that by the time you go to treat that tumor, that those cells that you looked at are going to act the same way. Because there's still, um, the time that you take it to the microscope and analyze it in the pathology lab, that tumor, those cells are still undergoing challenges and still having to adapt and change. So cellular plasticity is the ability to change and respond, and they need this. Cancer cells have to have this. If they didn't have this, then they would be terminated by the immune system early on, and they would respond the same way to chemotherapeutic drugs all the time. Remember, we're talking cellular plasticity, so each cell has its own ability I might respond one way, we're neighbor cells. Yes. I might respond one way and be killed by a treatment. You, on the other hand, might go into G0. I would sit in my office and become senescent. <laughs> what we call senile. But watch, I will come out of that. And we'll talk about that in a session coming up, aren't we? Yeah, so uh, just to bring up, um, remember how we talked about EMT to MET? Yes. That's a form of plasticity. Wow, yeah. it is. That's absolutely. Yes. I never thought of it like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So the ability to change and to put on this coat while you're traveling to a different site and behave differently to become a mesenchymal cell and then to uh, maintain plasticity and become epithelial again. That's really, if, you, if you're having a hard time with plasticity, think of EMT to MET because well, that like is a that. form of it. Yeah. It really demands uh, combination therapy because if we were only treating one type of tumor, a tumor that was completely clonal, then all of the cells would behave the same way and uh, we could predict multi-drug resistance and that is not the case. Uh, we can predict it in the sense that we know that it's going to happen, um, but all the cells don't respond the same way. So you have these cells that have uh, that are plastic and can change um, depending on their environmental microenvironmental selection pressures. They can change differently in whatever way they need to to survive. Whereas at the tumor level, the heterogeneity is these cells coming together. Uh, so these cells down here that are connected to vasculature are going to respond differently. Um, than the core of the tumor that has no vascularization. Um, so that's really heterogeneity. These, the ability to respond differently um, depending on where you are because the microenvironment in a tumor is not all the same. It's not homogenous. So since the microenvironment is not homogenous, the blood supply, the nutrients, the oxygen, um, the cells also have to behave differently. To put the microenvironment in perspective, um, if we're sitting here in this room and there's a cold fan blowing on me, um, I'm going to want to put on a coat and you're sitting by the window and the sun is shining on you. We're in the same region, but our microenvironmental selection pressures are different. So we're going to act differently and respond differently. And that's exactly what's going on in a tumor. If you're confused about stemness, think about what a cell has to go through to go from EMT to MET. Remember epithelial to mesenchymal transition and then mesenchymal to epithelial transition. So you have to become deregulated and uh, change your molecular markers and your molecular signature and that's exactly what's going on with stemness. Um, 
Does stemness not have a molecular signature? No, that is not true. It absolutely does. So there's a change. It's just that we have not characterized that molecular signature as well. So at the G1 point, a quiescent stem cell uh, can go into G0 or it can become senescent. What is the difference? A sen senescent cell is very well characterized. We have specific molecular markers and senescence, um, when we consider that a cell has gone into senescence, we don't uh, think of it ever coming out of senescence. Um, so that's uh, basically termination of the cell cycle. Whereas quiescence um, is a transient state of G0. Um, and then you can have differentiation of a stem cell. Now this process is true for cancer cells where they can become quiescent, they could decide to die, um, which uh, they wouldn't if they're surviving effectively, um, or they can differentiate into a phenotype that confers survival. So those are the decision points for cancer cells, which are very, very similar to the decision points for stem cells. And that's why stemness is aligned with quiescence. So these cancer cells that become stem-like, they're um, increasing their level of microRNA and uh, they're decreasing the expression of their molecular signature um, and becoming uh, less uh, differentiated. And that's where the stemness comes in. So the stemness is the opposite side of the scale from differentiation. Often when cancers become undifferentiated, when we say they're poorly differentiated, that's associated with a very a much, uh, uh, a much uh, or a more poor prognosis for that cancer. Yeah, so these cells that are either quiescent, and when we're talking quiescence, Please remember we're talking a state that the cell has entered, whereas stemness is the molecular signature. The loss of molecular signature as we know it and becoming more stem-like um, instead of differentiated.